had to victims rather alleged demand for gratification. Abadi J, do you have anything to say on this? Yeah, that's that's the point. They they were mentioned in the charge sheets, but the charge sheets did not say they were beneficiaries of bribe taking, of uh, gratification. They were in fact victims. Mm. They were in fact victims. So um, nothing suggested that they should actually be investigated or that um, uh, the ESCC should look, take a second look at them as um, uh, beneficiaries of that uh, corrupt um, era at the CBN. They were in fact victims. Mm -hmm. That point has to be made that they were in fact victims. Right. Nipco and uh, uh, Punja, Punja, they were in fact victims and um, hopefully um, the justice will be served and uh, those who do not deserve to uh, receive a program on this matter will not receive a program. So we apologize for um, uh, the minister's representation and as a responsible, um, as responsible people, uh, we, when we make a mistake, because we are not God, we make a mistake, mm. we must be quick oh, no. To own up to our our yeah, hero. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, indeed. Well said. Well, let's quickly move on to our discussion for today. While the Naira has continued to appreciate against the dollar to become the world's best performing currency, food inflation in Nigeria jumped to a historic high in March. <coughs> Figures released by the National Bureau of Statistics in its Consumer Price Index report for March 2024 show that Food inflation, which constitutes more than 50% of headline inflation, rose for the 15th straight time from 37.92% to 40.01%. Paul, would I say this are uh, interesting times or tough times ahead? It, yes, indeed, they are, they are interesting times. And um, it, uh, they are also times full of contradictions. Contradictions in the sense that you would have expected that um, with the rebound of the Naira, there will be an impact, if not immediate, but uh, it was a prospect of um, positive impact that one would see it. Because we cannot say that the CBN, everybody is lauding uh, CBN under uh, Cardoso for its policies to bring down uh, the uh, dollars. Uh, at, at some point, I, I was thinking that it could be that some people are just wicked. Why wouldn't you want to uh, let the price of food go down? However, there are some drivers, right. drivers of uh, the food inflation, inflation. One of them being epileptic power supply. And perhaps the rise, <laughs> the, the, uh, the recent hike in the uh, yeah, in the uh, what's it called now? In the price of uh, electricity. Right. So if, for example, if people have to produce at a higher cost, there's no way it is going to have that immediate effect, or I mean, a good effect on on the food price. Mm -hmm. What about transportation? Transportation, <laughs> the cost of transportation is still high. So you are going to have. You wouldn't blame those who are providing food for us. Despite the fact that we have, the, the Naira is appreciating. Uh, and so even if, if, if the Naira comes down to 500 or 400 to $1 or even 200 so other factors definitely have to be dealt with. And I, and I think that government, the authorities should do their best to um, uh, drive down uh, the, the food inflation. Because if, you see, the average man on the street does not understand too much strangey, <laughs> you know. Right. They, what, they just want to see that they can get food at a very affordable price. They want their purchasing power. And just, it's very simple. If food prices go down, you are, you are, you are invariably increasing the purchasing power of the people. Mm -hmm. So I think that government should quick work on the drivers of, of, of the inflation. Right, working on the drivers. BKO, your position on this, even as there are concerns that so many businesses might go under with this rising inflation. Yes, but um, it's already been predicted that uh, 
before the end of the year, it will, it will begin to go down. The, the value of the Naira against the international currencies um, is something that gladdens the heart because even this morning, it's exchanged for 950 in some places, um, 1,020. So for it to go below the 1,000 mark mm. is something the Nigerians are happy about. And no one can deny that, mm -hmm. that at this time, the Naira is doing very well. Some of the people who are quick to post it as one of the worst performing currencies in the world, They've refused to report that Goldman Sachs rated our currency as the best performer in the world because of the way it has performed against global currencies in a space of one month. Right. It's unprecedented. Mm. And to see the parallel market rates lower than the official rates, no one had seen that in 15 years. You know, so it's significant that the currency is appreciating value. So when Paul talked about some other factors that drive food inflation, yeah. my mind went to diesel. Mm. Diesel prices, because um, there is no subsidy on diesel. Diesel is still being sold at. In some that cases, up to 1,300, yeah. you know, or more, depending on where you are buying Indication. from. Uh, 1,200, 1,300. Uh, we have to find a way to bring down the cost of diesel because the big companies, big manufacturing concerns, they rely a lot on diesel. The public electricity supply is not reliable. <coughs> so the big trucks that bring food from the north to the south and from the south to the north, they use diesel. So diesel costs, energy costs generally, mm. are a big driver of food inflation. Right. We, that, that point has to be made. Right. The, um, the value of the Naira, I mean, uh, the, the uh, poor performance of the Naira definitely had a big impact on this. But don't forget, we are talking about March. So even the, um, the fact that NEC, NERC, has increased electricity tariff, that certainly was not factored in this report yeah. because that's a very recent development. But as we go on, there is no way that energy costs will not contribute to higher prices. It's like we are coming out of a problem and embracing another. You know? If the Naira continues to appreciate and it stops in the region of 600, 700, which is our desire, although if it goes below that, we will not uh, yes. mind. Definitely, it will help to bring down inflation, inflation to an extent. Yes. <laughs> but don't also forget that because the Naira had been weak, people were pushing grains, especially, to Neighboring across countries. the border of Niger, across our borders, mm -hmm. Niger, Chad, mm -hmm. uh, Benin Republic. They, they feel comfortable now that their currency is stronger than ours. But if the rebound continues, our currency will yeah. bounce back and be stronger than the sefer that we had always mocked. Mm as a weak currency. Mm. So my feeling is that food availability, um, even at a cheaper rate, will be guaranteed when people are discouraged from pushing their uh, grains yes. across the border, yeah. they will be made to sell here. Mm. Again, we must admit that the falling, I mean, the uh, good performance of the, uh, the Naira against the uh, global currencies in recent times is beginning to impact on food prices. Right. Even rice, for example. Rice, the uh, price of rice is going down. In, in, in fact, in some cases, it's now 
20,000 less than the price for which it was sold two months ago. Mm, really? Yes. Uh, surprising. Yes, that's the thing. It depends on what brand of rice you are buying. Right. The bull, uh, this bull brand, for example, is very expensive. Mm -hmm. Somebody will go to a market and he sees the bull brand. It's one of the most expensive in the market. He will quote that price. But he has not benchmarked that against oh, other, yes. other brands. But the truth is, grains, maize, rice, the prices are coming down. Do a market survey, you'll see that the price of rice, maybe what we can even do before Friday, we'll mm -hmm. get someone to go into the market, do this market survey, hear from the people. Because yeah. our people say, GD has come again. You see a trader, they didn't mm -hmm. know. But we've done this in the past. Mm -hmm. This we survey is in Kano, in uh, Taraba, yeah. uh, Kwara, we have pr prices of grains began to come. Right. So we'll do it again and be able to show our people, even right. those who deal in cars, you know, um, it is imported cars. Mm -hmm. Once the currency is weak, their prices go up. People are reporting now that the this prices are beginning to come down. Mm -hmm. So That's this the, is what we want to see the, uh, the because our people are going through a lot. The, that's what we really need to see. I would hope that comes to come to bear in a short time as possible as well. Yeah. Let's really move on to our next discussion where the collapse of the national electricity grid is now a common occurrence in Nigeria as homes and businesses were again left without power for several hours on Sunday night. The country witnessed its sixth power grid collapse of 2024 as electricity generation collapsed from 2,583 megawatts at 2 a.m. on Monday to 64.7 around 3 a.m. before the grid was restored later in the day. Although the Transmission Company of Nigeria attributed the cause of the grid collapse to a fire incident, constant gas shortage for power generation companies and vandalism of power infrastructure, are responsible for recurrent cases of grid collapse in the country. Paul, yes, we know that power supply is erratic in our country, and these uh, issues seems to be the lights in the drivers. Power, gas shortage, <laughs> now we've had incidents of fire at uh, AFAM's uh, power plant. Now, what do you make of this recurring situation? Honestly, it, it's very bothersome. It's bothersome because this is this time it will be happening. Mm -hmm. You know, we just talked about inflation now. We just we all just acknowledge that the efforts of uh, the CDM are actually paying off. And everything Biki said about prices gradually coming down, that is true. But in the long run, you need some of all these things to work. Now, we've been hearing of vandalism. Mm -hmm. It's not a new thing. It's always the reason. It's always the reason. You know, gas shortage, it's always the reason. Although we are doing so, so much of gas flaring in the country, and yet we still talk about gas shortage. Mm. So for me, I think we just keep uh, dancing around the problem, and there has not been any uh, holistic um, solution. solution. Mm. For example, who is guarding the facility? Who are the people to prevent the vandals from, from operating? Why are they not? Who is holding them responsible for it? Why is it that it's every time we talk about vandalism, for, for, this is uh, uh, April, right? Right. This April, mm -hmm. and it's already happened six, six, <laughs> for the sixth time. I don't, we, we still have many months ahead of us before the end of the year. How many more times will the grid collapse? So for me, I don't like all of these excuses. We say we are not even generating power enough. The other time, I think it was on this program, or another program, no, not this program, mm -hmm. on, on that uh, uh, that TV station I was, I heard the Minister of Power, you know, talk about plans and everything, including plans for alternative uh, uh, energy source. Uh, 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 you understand? Including plans to improve our generation. Mm. Although he, he couldn't talk much about distribution, because even if you generate and transmit and all of that. However, the truth of the matter is we are not even satisfied. We have never, we have not gotten power right in so many years. And now we are getting to 64.7. <laughs> it's very bad. I, I, I think we need to get more serious with the way we handle the power situation because it's actually a major driver for the economy. Right. In every, from any context you look at it, 
And if we cannot get power right, you will discover that the efforts, the efforts of CBN government, the president, and other efforts will be, complete, will be completely undermined because you can't make any meaningful progress without powers, without I mean, a varied power, var var power sector. Right. And that's the truth. Mm. BKO, power supply, like we've rightly discussed over time, is an issue for Nigeria. And it seems to me that the government is trying to get things right. But in your own perspective, what do you think the government needs to do to checkmate these activities that are, you know, affecting or hampering the steady supply of power? You see, the, the way to approach this is to look at the, look at the entire power sector. On Sunday, we were discussing here because everyone seems to think, oh, the discos are the problem. Ah, the discos are the problem. I am not saying the discos are not a big problem. Right. But the point that I'm making, that some fixated Nigerians um, don't appear to want to hear, is that the entire power sector is rocked by multi accepted crisis, crisis of different dimensions, okay. affecting transition and transmission, distribution. generation, and distribution. And distribution. Mm. The way to solve the problem is not simply to look at one sector or one subsector and right. say, ah, this is, is the discourse. In fact, it's an illiterate way of looking at the problem. You understand? Mm. Just as some people, because they have lights in their area, they say, ah, electricity has improved. <laughs> and I've said the way to know whether electricity has improved is to find out how much we are generating, look at how much the transition, uh, transmission company of Nigeria wields to the discourse right. relative to what's uh, generated, and then the discourse, how much mm -hmm. have they evacuated? That's the way to know. You cannot say power uh, situation has improved because in your area you have light. It's an illiterate way of looking at the problem. And we will not solve a problem if we don't look at it, look at the bigger picture. Right. Like what happened now? These system failures that we are talking about, is it a problem of the discourse? Will you say the discourse caused it? Mm. This year alone, mm. we've, we've, we've now had more than one system failure in, in a month. That's what it means. If you had six in, f in four months, we are not even <laughs> at, at the end of four months. <laughs> How many are we going to have before the end of, of the year? year? If we had less than 50, system failures in three years. And in four months, we already had four. Does it not show clearly that we are not in a good place? Mm. Even with, with people, you put some people who are not even receiving electricity in excess of 10 hours a day, you put them in band A. Mm. Are you whining me? <laughs> they don't get more than eight to 11 hours a day. And you put them on band A. <laughs> Who does that now? So we have problems. If, if electricity supply can drop to <laughs> less than 100 megawatts in a day. Mm. Smacks of something else. Yeah. Gas supply. We always said gas constraint is a problem. Mm -hmm. People breaking pipelines. Mm -hmm. Electricity, I mean, Genco's located so far away from source of gas. It's a problem. But you know, in our country, if we located the uh, gen I mean, generating companies right. in the same area, because the source of gas is in the Niger Delta, mm -hmm. people will raise hell about it. They will complain. Mm. They will complain. Mm -hmm. But it has its own problems. Pipelines crisscrossing our country, and a lot of them on the surface of the earth. Yeah. People, they, I, I've seen pipelines where children were running on top of them. In the Niger Delta, I saw videos. Mm -hmm. They were just playing around. They don't even know. <laughs> Oblivious of the danger. Yeah. They were just, 
Sometimes people break in pipelines, believing that is crude oil that is there, only to discover that it's gas. gas. You merely wasted it's it's, yeah. because you cannot pipe it. What you broken, you broken it for nothing. There is no way you can trap the gas that is escaping. These boys doing all this, they need to be spoken to or, 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 or find a way to deal uh, with the situation. They can't be breaking pipelines like that because you don't, well, after breaking it, you cannot, you can't um, uh, evacuate the gas. You can't do anything to it. But Paul you, just, just, you just waste it. Yeah, but Paul just, you know, gave an instance that perhaps you need to police these areas, these infrastructures better if we're talking about, you know, safety of these uh, gas pipelines. We made a mistake from the beginning. If you bury it so deep in the ground, mm. bury it so deep in the ground, and you make it, you make it risky for anyone to attempt to get there. Either uh, you could electrocution, right. and all that. Mm -hmm. They will not go there. The way the way we put the gas on the on the surface of the earth in some places, I mean gas pipelines. And the way we didn't bury some of them deep enough is an incentive. It encourages the boys, yes, the, those vandals. That's the thing. We should have, if we are to take a look at the, the pipeline infrastructure again and we have the resources, we, we need to rebury them, bury them deep in the ground. They won't get there. That's the thing. Other countries do that. But where are we going to find the kind of money to do that now? Mm. Because the same way that they are breaching even petroleum, uh, pipelines. I remember the former minister of uh, petroleum, uh, minister of state, petroleum resources, Ibe Kachiku, telling us that they wanted to send um, refined crude to some of the depots. They then decided that okay, let us even first pump water through the pipelines. Do you know that on the day that it was announced that they will pump uh, petrol? Pipelines were breached in so many places, meaning that some people within NNPC, DPR, and the rest, they had already notified their boys that, oh, we are pumping petrol. Mm. Oh, yeah, go and breach the pipelines. They didn't know that it was water that they what would encounter. The mm. They broke the pipelines in different places, only to describe that, oh, it was actually water that was pumped. Mm. <laughs> yes, I was shocked when the minister was telling us, that's what we do to ourselves. In this country, we sabotage our country. We do great things to undermine our country. Not just with our mouths and, uh, and, and what we type on social media, but yeah. even some of the things that we do. We behave like enemies of our country. And it has to stop. Right, indeed it has to stop if we need to be progressive in this country we call Nigeria. Well, let's quickly go on a very quick break. We'll have more discussions on Journalist Hangout. You stay with us. Get ready for this momentous occasion. The esteemed Duse Emirate Jigawa State is set to witness history as Al Hajinas or Haladi Danu is to burned as the Sadonan Duse. Join in celebrating this noble ceremony where tradition meets royalty. Al Hajinas or Haladi Danu OFR, the Sadonan Duse, under the spectacular patronage and blessing of His Royal Highness, the Emir of Duse, Al Haji Muhammad Hamim Nusanusi CFR. Experience the richness of our culture and the grace of our heritage as we honor a man of distinction, Al Haji Nasser Halaj Dano CFR, as the new Sadon and Dusi. Chairman of the occasion, Mala Muhammad Buhari GCFR, former President, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Special guest of honor, Alaji Kashim Shatima GCON, Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Chief host and guest of honor, Mala Umar Namadi, the Executive Governor of Jigawa State, Royal Father of the day only of Ife, Oba Adeyeye, Anitan Ogumusi CFR, date Thursday, 18th April 2024, at 11pm prompt, venue Amias Palace, Dusegaru. Don't miss out on this historic event. Join us as we welcome Al Haji Nasr Halad Danu. Stay tuned for updates and be part of this majestic celebration.
New beginnings are always colorful. When we celebrate the start of life's journey, we marry in colors. With our proudly Nigerian Dulux paints, now available in any color, express your world however you want it. Visit a Dulux color center to get any color instantly. Dulux, let's color. I actually came to pay the money for the recruitment consultancy you did for my company. Beautiful. Uh, I took two million. I just hold on. <laughs> I now collect dollars. What? Yes. I don't understand what's happening to Naira these days. So, so it's going to be two million times today's exchange rate. Hey, 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 doctor, know? wait, wait. Doctor, wait. Don't tell me you are one of those people who directly put pressure on the Naira and make it lose its value. You want to dollarize our economy and yet you pretend as if you don't know what is happening to the Naira. I've told you about how you abuse the Naira by spraying and stamping on it during your occasion. You deface and abuse the Naira as if it's not our national asset. How? Oh, I will not take this. And neither will the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission task force on currency abuse and forex malpractice. Take it easy with you. They are coming for you. Desist from economic sabotage or you will face the wrath of the law. Well, like a poorly produced movie, some Yoruba nation agitators wielding guns and wearing military camouflage attempted to breach security at the Oyo State House of Assembly and the Governor's Office in Ibadan. The State Police Commissioner, Debola Hamzat, described the invasion as a treasonable felony and terrorism legend sanctions. Meanwhile, the police have launched a manhunt for, the, for Dupe Unitiri Abiola suspected of sponsoring the invasion of the Oyo State Government Secretariat by the agitators. Unitiri Abiola, widow of the late Chief MKO Abiola, claimed responsibility for the violence in a viral video. But first, let's share the story of the arrest of the agit agitators by TVC News' Olaidi Uyewole Wiki. It's three days after suspected members of the Yoruba Nation Secession Group invaded the Oyo State Secretariat in Agodi. They attempted to seize power from the government after hoisting their flag. After engaging in a gun battle with security personnel, the suspects were arrested and are now being paraded by the police and are to face prosecution for their actions. The commissioner of police described the act as criminal and unpatriotic and assured residents of Oyo the police's unwavering commitment to protecting their lives and property. While declaring this act as criminal, unpatriotic, and a clear case of treasonable felony and terrorism to be met with adequate sanction through purposeful prosecutions, the command reassures the good people of Oyo State that it remains solidly unwavering to the protection of their lives and property as constitutionally required by the laws of the land. He asked parents to prevail on their children against being used as agents to cause chaos in the state. As a parent, I enjoy other parents, guardians, and leaders in every sphere of political, religious, and social influence to prevail on their children, words, protests, and followers against being used by unpatriotic individuals to promote anarchy in the state and by extension, the nation. Alabi Ogundeji, one of the suspects, is a teacher at the Federal Government College, Oyo. For him, there is no going back in the attainment of their independence, as they have the backing of the appropriate international bodies. We are indigenous people of Yoruba. We are in Yoruba land, and that is why we have done that. And we have done all the legal activities and procedures that, we need, that need to be done. So who granted you the sovereignty? The United Nations, of course, and the Charter of the United Nations, the African Union, the ECOWAS Court, and the uh, EU. Are there documents to support all this? Yes, we have all documents. This 75-year-old and his daughter said they were introduced to the group with promises of a better life after achieving their so-called independence. Items recovered from the suspects include guns, live cartridges, 
cutlasses, paraphernalia of various offices with Yoruba Nation inscriptions, among others. Olajo Yewole, TVZ News, Ibadan. Biki, you described it a joke taken too far because I, I, I just can't <laughs> even imagine it. Seeing the suspects, you know, even saying that they wouldn't even go back on their so called agenda. <laughs> you know, um, it's better the bad governors, the Southwest governors, the armed forces do their best to nip this thing in the board because this thing is like um, um, it's like a drug. Mm. Once you are hooked on it, you don't want to, to you don't want to give it up. People have been brainwashed that look uh, having the Yoruba nation will guarantee um prosperity, and um, better living standards. <laughs> but there is no, <laughs> there is no, there is no such guarantee. Even if you are all of the same tribe, the same religion, it is no guarantee that you won't fight one another. Look at, um, look at Somalia. Not even going for Sudan. Sudan. Oh, no, no, Sudan. I can't use Sudan. I can't use Sudan. So Malia is the same language for, I mean, is the same mm. yeah. uh, religion for everybody. Mm. They are one people, one people. Yet they've been fighting one another for more than 20 years. One people. You know, many countries of the world you have, you are divided by ethnicity, religion, and all that. It's one religion. It's not a place where you can say, ah, Christians, maybe one, this percent. They are wholly Muslim. Christians. The same people speaking the same language. But it's not a guarantee that there will be peace. It's not a guarantee of unity. It's not a guarantee mm -hmm. of prosperity. So people should have faith in Nigeria. I, I, I believe in Nigeria. I believe that Nigeria will get better. Yes, there are things that we need to talk about. Right. Yes, there is a need to restructure our country. Some steps along that line are being taken. They may not call it restructuring, for example, but it's part of what people have been fighting for. Right. For states to be able to generate their electricity, for example, it's part of restructuring. restructuring. If we start state police now, it's part of restructuring. It's part of, it was part of the demands that people made. So the process has begun. Yes. They may not announce it, oh, restructuring has begun, but it's, it's taking place. Right. Even in the north, where are they opposed restructuring? Are they not talking about state police now? Have Nearly all the northwest states have their own security outfit now. Mm -hmm. You know, they may not have the weapons to confront the bad boys. But they have their everybody is thinking along that line. They know that this federal central policing system cannot deliver the goods. I don't know, I understand why our people look at even Sunday Bo and uh, the prof uh, who made so much noise, um, uh, a lot of wala about this agitation. They disown these people. They disown them. Now they have uniform. And they have weapons. You can't take up arms against your state, your country. If, and you can't defeat the state. So if you take up arms against your state, you have created the, the, the basis for you, for them to, for the armed forces to come after you. Because America is big as it is, bigger than West Africa. You, you cannot get up as a state in America. No matter how far flung you are, even Alaska. They can't get up today. Alaska that they bought from, uh, bought from uh, Russia, they cannot get up today and say they want to get out of the union. They'll be resisted. Mm. They'll be resisted. I know that. To say you want to get out of the American Union, you'll be resisted. So people take up arms against our nation, whatever their eyes see, they should be prepared for it because 
There is no way that they won't be resisted. You can right. see with Tonam Nam Dekano, if they, if they handle these guys with kid gloves, people will say, oh, when it was Tonam Nam Kano, yeah, this was what you did. This, that. So I agree that what they've done amounts to terrorism. Absolutely. Especially yeah. now that weapons have been found in their hands. Paul, we all also understand from the police that uh, someone has been named to yeah. sponsor this uh, agitators mm. known as uh, Dukwe Onitiri Abiola, who is alleged to be the wife of former uh, of MK Abiola. Yeah, she was. And even though she, she has been uh, disassociated, or rather, some people, some people have denounced her. Uh, will I say her claim as one of the wives of, uh, of the late MK Abiola? What do you make of this? You know, honestly, it's very depressing that somebody associated with. Mm -hmm the name of a hero of democracy, someone that uh, a holiday, in a, a public holiday in Nigeria is uh, declared for, uh, would uh, uh, be the one that is uh, uh, also connected with this kind of thing. Adiola is well respected in this country and will forever be respected. Mm -hmm. And um, this woman uh, is uh, bringing shame to the name, you know, by doing all of this. But that said, I think um, I will take it from where Biki will stop, regarding kid glove. See, anybody, whether uh, the name is Onitiri Abiola or the name is even Jesus, should be dealt with. See, Boko Haram started like this. Yes. You know, and then we were sleeping, we were caught napping right. until it became... Into a problem. Yes. A a a a serious, <laughs> yes. Now, God forbid... God forbid. We are, we are not through. We are not through with dealing with Boko Haram yet, though we have made significant progress. We are not through with dealing with banditry yet. God forbid that this kind of thing erupts and becomes bigger in the Southwest. Now, we have to know, how did these people get these weapons? You heard them. They, they confessed. They said that they have sponsors. How did these weapons come in? What routes? The, 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 where, uh, through which routes were the weapons transported to the country. Right. So we must identify these people. And we must, not just this ragtag, uh, it's not enough to attempt, these people are looking so unkempt, and uh, it's, it's not enough to arrest them. It's to go deep. It's to go deep. Of course, let them be thoroughly probed. Let them sing like canary. Let them give us their, the names of their sponsors. Let us go after their sponsors so that we can nip this in the board on time. We cannot afford that any part of Nigeria, or if South for that matter, you know, becomes, Hijacked. yes, we, we actually have enough problems. We just talk about some problems now. We cannot add this to the problems we have in this country. Absolutely. So please, we cannot treat them with the kid. No, let's go after them and let's stop this trash, this rubbish. Mm. Final words, Vicky, before we move on to our next discussion. Yes. Um, we, you can't uh, take up arms against your state. Mm. Armed struggle against the Nigerian state cannot be tolerated. It's unconstitutional. And um, coming up with the insignia and other paraphernalia of the Yoruba nation is, um, is, is provocative. Right. Provocative because we have laws that govern our country. They are uh, looking for trouble. <laughs> they are looking for trouble. And I think the government has to be very careful in the way it handles this matter. Mm. If they handle it with kid gloves, it may become something that they can't control. Hopefully it uh, will. Just as we, we saw Boko Haram. Boko Haram actually began in 2003, but their first attempt at killing people was in 2009. Mm. If we had named it in the board, board at then the time. when they were freeing people from prisons in Bauchi, Madura, if we had named Boko Haram in the board then, it would not have Be developed into the monster that it is today. Mm. That even the bandits have received inspiration from Boko Haram. Because the kidnapping of school children in large numbers, it was Boko Haram that started it. Right. Today, bandits have uh, taken over. Taken over and turned it to their own means of making money. Now let's hope that this uh, Esther, please, if, if you just permit me. If, if just, just, yeah. A friend of mine just sent me a message and I said, so Yoruba Nation won their government. No. 
majority of us in Yoruba don't want a separate government. They Those don't. ones are just very they few. They don't represent they us. They don't represent mm. us. Right. Right. And right. it needs to be said. Mm. All right, point taken there. Let's quickly move yeah. on to our next discussion where the National Chairman of the All Progressives Congress is involved in several political battles. And these include a court case over bribery allegations and purported suspension from the APC. But some members of the APC National Working Committee and the Kano State Chapter of the party faulted the suspension of Ganduje by the leadership of his ward in Dawan Kintufa, local government area of the state. The party in the state overruled Ganduje's suspension and slammed a six-month suspension on the ward executive members. BKO, the story a little bit uh, generated a, a little a lot of buzz, rather, you know, but some would say it was coming because Ganduje had a little bit of baggage in 2019 when he was the viral video showed him stuffing some dollars in his uh, babariga at the time. So one would say, well, it was coming at a point. Well, um, this one has no relationship with that one. <coughs> because the story we have here is mm. about his suspension. It's about his suspension by his own word. Uh, word school. That suspension is a farce. And Aladu Guanjo, the man described as the legal advisor, legal advisor <laughs> has since come out to say he was impartiated. <laughs> He came out to say the person just put on sunglasses like me. <laughs> so it's a, it's a big joke that is going on in Kano. And 27 members of that ESCO, they are even threatening legal action now against the people yeah. who purportedly suspended the chairman. I mean, the national chairman of a party, it's not easy to suspend the national chairman of a party. Mm. And they are saying, look, even the, peop the people who claim that you, uh, they suspended him, Indeed, they are APC members, but not ESCO members. The real ESCO members and the Haladu that they claimed uh, was the, um, uh, the person who, who, who acted as spokesperson, the person who is the legal advisor of the ward, he came out and said, see me, he was in the secretariat yesterday to say, we know nothing about this. And that's why they believe that, oh, this whole thing, it is the NMPP, the party, the ruling party in the mm. state that is trying to embarrass the governor. They want to put the governor on trial along with his wife and four others for corruption. The federal high court already ruled that the anti-corruption commission in the state has no power to put him on trial, that it is the EFCC that has the power to put someone on trial for that kind of offense. Right. They appealed the decision of the federal high court, but they are not prepared to wait for the federal, I mean, uh, for the courts to give for the uh, order or judgment of the appeal court to be given. They want to arrange the man tomorrow. Okay, let me hold your thoughts. I understand we have a break to take right now. When we re return, we'll have more discussions on this very issue. Please stay with us. Get ready for this momentous occasion. The esteemed Duse Emirates Jigawa State is set to witness history as Al Haji Nasser Haladi Danu is to burned as the Sadonan Duse. Join in celebrating this noble ceremony where tradition meets royalty. Al Haji Nasser Haladi Danu OFR, the Sadonan Duse, under the spectacular patronage and blessing of His Royal Highness, the Emir of Duse, Al Haji Muhammad Hamim Nusanusi CFR. Experience the richness 
richness of our culture and the grace of our heritage as we honor a man of distinction, Al Haji Nasser Halaj Dano CFR, as the new Saddam and Dusi, chairman of the occasion, Mala Muhammad Buhari GCFR, former president, Federal Republic of Nigeria, special guest of honor, Alaji Kashim Shatima GCON, vice president, Federal Republic of Nigeria, chief host and guest of honor, Mala Umar Namadi, the executive governor of Jigawa State, royal father of the day, Oni of Ife, Oba Adeyeye, Anitan Ogumusi CFR, date Thursday, 18th April 2024, at 11 p.m. prompt, venue Amias Palace, Dusegaru. Don't miss out on this historic event. Join us as we welcome Al Haji Nasser Halad Dano. Stay tuned for updates and be part of this majestic celebration. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, we are still discussing the enga engagement, rather, the suspension, rather, of, NL of APC's national chairman, uh, Abdullahi Ganduje, by his ward in Kano. So, Babajide, you are giving us your perspective before. Yes. We went you know, this, I'm saying that this suspension is a farce. Mm. And um, it's just a, a group of people impersonating ESCO members of uh, the Ganduje ward. Dawakin, uh, Dawakin Tofa local government. Yeah. So when they suspended the chairman. And I'm saying that the person who fronted for the mutineers, one Haladu Gwanjo. Haladu Gwanjo was actually impersonated. The real like, legal advisor of the party in the world. The <laughs> one that purportedly issued the statement, mm. came to the party secretary to say, look, <laughs> we don't know, know anything about it. He dismissed the <laughs> suspension. So who did? It was somebody in person and put on glasses <laughs> like him. So they couldn't identify the person? They know the person now, but you, you now, if they say, okay, this is, Allah, do you know anybody by that? <laughs> it is when you know the person in real life mm. that you can determine whether he's been impersonated. I mean, this is just a small word in Kano. People don't know them. So that is the thing. This is politics. The nasty animosity between Kwan Kwaso and um, Ganduji. Ganduji. No one can deny that it has crept into the, party. Uh, yes, party the, 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 the uh, crisis in the state has mm. crept into the, the, the politics of the state. I've heard that Kwan Kwaso has plans to um, go back to APC. But he will not want to go there with Ganduja still there. The two of them can never work in the same party. I predicted back then, and it happened. One had to live for the other. Mm. The same way that Tahiru Bafarawa will never agree to be in the same party. That's mm. in Sokoto. Will never agree to be in the same party with Magataka Dawamako. There are, there are many of them like that. Politicians who don't see eye to eye. Right. Now, if this man, if Kwan Kwaso is to return to the APC, mm. it has to be when Ganduja is no longer chairman. So whatever they can do to frustrate the old man and push him out of the party, they will do it so that by the time he leaves the party, he can come to the APC Maybe the president will give him ministerial appointment and all that. You know that they were planning to, they said the president wanted to give him that last time. Right. So this is high stakes politics being played. And I remember that after this, uh, the Supreme Court judgment, Ganduje came to Kano and he said, Do one day she go Jamia APC, neighbor Bansadi. English Do one day she go okay. Jamia APC neighbor Bansan, whoever comes into APC, I am his father. People said he was referring to Kwan Kwaso. <laughs> the meaning is whoever enters yeah. comes into the APC, I am his father. So we said we were sending a message to the man that look, because at that time they were having meetings to see whether there can be a major 
so many people can come and all that. Mm. So you have to send that message mm. that mm. whoever comes into the party can be his father. So right. the rivalry between them has been there. Is there now uh, the governor is Kwan Kwaso's in law. So of course the governor can be used to bury um, Ganduje once and for all. That would be Kwan Kwaso's goal. The day Kwan Kwaso destroys Ganduje, that Ganduje becomes uh, nothingness in politics. Uh, Kwan Kwaso will be extremely happy <laughs> that he has finally seen the back of his enemy. This is what is going on. It's clear that this whole thing mm. is a waste of time. It's right. a pass. It's null and void. Paul, There's no such thing yeah. as a suspension. Let's have your thoughts on this. Absolutely, it's a pass. Personally, I'm not a fan of Ganduji. Right. Okay, after all, uh, we have had chairman being removed in the past. Oshomole, even uh, Abdullah Adamu. But there are processes. You don't, this one was just, people were just joking. Uh, mm. They were just joking. Mm. You know, you came up, you said you were suspending some, uh, someone. But you didn't even have the power to do so. You were not even valid escorts because the, 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 the escorts actually came up and disowned them. The local, the party at the local government level in that state disowned them. The state's APC disowned them. So the people they impersonated. <laughs> so the person they are impersonated, Aladu Guanjo, disowned them. So they are just on their own. Meanwhile, we're also told that there are records of their meetings with the, the other people. The rival party, yes. The rival party. The party so you could say everything was just, uh, it's just a, uh, a, a poli politics. You know, it reminds me what politics. happened to Abure. You know, they tried to <laughs> send Abure packing from his word. Mm. Mm. It was a waste of time, too, because the National Leadership of the Labour Party ruled that the word, ESCO at the word level cannot suspend the national chairman. Right. You know, so this day, since he succeeded with Osho Mole, they've been trying to use that trick. Mm. But Osho Mole, he didn't just succeed with Osho Mole. The governors no, were so exactly. <laughs> behind that one. The, the governors, governors own the party. Yes, the governors <laughs> were the ones who instigated that one. And the president at that time uh, turned a blind eye to what was going on. Because clearly exactly. he too did not want to show Mole anymore. Mm -hmm. You know? So, okay, so in all of this now, Paul, where do you see this leading to? And no, it, it leads to nowhere. Yeah. It leads and to nowhere. Already, the state government is trying to prosecute the man. They are even, the, 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 the process is even full of e Right. You understand? Mm. So if separate issues, if you think the man has a corruption case, if you're able to prosecute him, I'm not even saying he's guilty. If you're able to prosecute him, if the courts find him guilty, let the court, let the judiciary do its thing. Now, if the, if the party wants the man out, if the party truly wants the man out, the party knows how to get the man yes. out. Not so a bunch of impostors or a bunch of impersonators who, who even did it in a criminal way. Now, they have brought problem upon themselves because the person that was impersonated can go to court and, and that's a criminal. No, that's a criminal. Even that, to go to that's an offense. Right. So whoever used them, I don't think those who use them will even come out to help them. You understand? <laughs> so this is leading to nowhere. It's just an exercise in futility. An exercise in futility, you say. It's like, well, that's where we leave it, gentlemen, on today's edition of Journalists Hangout. Thank you so much for being a part of the program. Don't forget, you can also watch a repeat broadcast of the show at 11 tonight. You can also watch the show on, uh, you can also watch the show on Sunday from 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. We are also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria. Let me thank members of the panel here in with me in the studio, Obajide Kolade, Otito Drew, and Paul Dada. Thank you so much for bringing your thoughts on the show. Well, that's it. Gentlemen, ladies, I'm Esther Mokwariola. Bye for now, and God bless Nigeria. Oh, Allah. Where you they come from? For if I did go, um, Antinata, I, I happy where well, well for this uh, clinic where you they go. It they very important for the baby. Not true. It will make me day safe. Me? 
and my baby where they carry for my belly. That means uh, everybody, Plus, including Peking, so where they inside belly, go collect vaccine. Today, I collect vaccine for tetanus. I collect vaccine for COVID. And those vaccines, now them go take care of my baby. And me, myself. And I now I can't know, say, he get vaccine for Peking them separately. Oh. And he get the one for pregnant women like me. Are they follow who know women when get belly supposed to collect them COVID and tetanus vaccine? They protect them and then pick him for belly from infection. Wakago any health center or call 77 22 for more information. The following is a paid presentation by ShopX TV. Tired of pans that scratch and stick or cookware that takes up valuable space in your kitchen and are of little to no use? Cooking used to be fun, but now it just feels like a chore. Introducing ShopX Gotham Hammered Copper Collection, the perfect cookware to upgrade your cooking experience. The Gotham Hammered Copper Collection features a super durable ultra non-stick surface. Eggs stick to other pans, but with the Hammered Copper Collection, they slide right out. Incredible! Plus, the Cool Touch Solid Cast Handle makes it safe and easy to cook even the hottest dishes. It's oven safe up to 500 degrees, so bake this beautiful chicken stew pizza and serve it straight from the pan. Or this tasty delicious cake that will have your whole family asking for more. Any recipe can be made in these pans, and then it wipes clean with ease, so cleanup is a breeze. Plus, use your hammered copper pan to make homemade pancakes that flips and slips right out. Or make mouth-watering jello of rice or even fluffy pounder with ease, because nothing sticks. I knew that a cool way to keep up with me. The Gotham Hammond Collection has been a game changer. No more burnt meals or hours spent scrubbing pots. Puppets TV. Hello everyone, you're watching Beyond 100 Days with Nifemi Oguntoy. You can join the conversation right now on X using hashtag Beyond 100 Days. Remember to tag at TVC News NG. Let's begin with some security reports here. The Chief of Army Staff says the present security situation presents more volatile challenges and that troops should adapt to meet the changing roles. Lieutenant General Tarid Lagwaja was speaking at the opening of a meeting with senior officers and field commanders in Abuja. Sifon Sien has more. It's the first conference of the Chief of Army Staff this year. Present are principal staff officers and field commanders. 
The objective is to review the activities of the army in the past three months. The chief of army staff is under no illusion about the security situation in the country. As leaders of our army, we must create that awareness across the force that the season we are in is more volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous than before. We must, therefore, continue to be adaptive, ingenious, innovative. Getting the army to adapt to the current realities is a priority. We will come up with better strategies and options for our field formations and even units and formations located around the country.